for joining me. I'm Scotty D. I'm working on a harmony guitar and I'm using wood veneer. Sometimes we use wood veneer for its decorative purposes and in this case I'm using it as a paint grade veneer where I'm gonna repaint this headstock black. What happened is it used to be black, it used to say harmony and someone decided to sand everything off at some point and what they did is they, they weren't parallel to the surface of the headstock. They created this like 10 inch radius right here in this area. So I had to build th this area up on either side, sand it flat, and then I glued this on last night with the type on two. Type on three, I'm sorry, type on three. Now the edges are eased a little bit around the edges. And so I think what I'm gonna do first, especially right here, so I'm going to go in there with some uh, CA glue and I'm going to just put it in gently right here along the, the edges before I trim it. main thing I want to show about in this video is how to trim veneer without it catching a grain line and splitting. So let me put that CA glue in there and then we'll look at Here's the some veneer. fall from that same piece of sycamore veneer. And it's a, it's a paint grade veneer. It's not for decorative use. And I'm going to... I'm going to draw a pencil line right here where I want to make a, a cut. Now if I were to cut it with scissors, I'd probably be okay. Cut right along the line pretty good. No problem with scissors. I was trying to make that curved cut on my headstock and I was just paring away with a knife. What happens is it's not going to let me take that curve. I'm trying to do a cut like this. I'm trying to go around a corner and I'm using a paring knife to go all the way through at once. It's not going to work very well. This is exactly what would happen on that headstock if I just tried going around it. It would, it would tear. So instead, what I want to do is do it with a sharp razor blade. This, this is a dull razor blade right here. That's probably why it was working okay. If I take a brand new sharp razor blade, what I want to do is go along that. I don't want to cut all the way through on the first cut. I just want to score it on the first cut. Then I'll go with my second cut and go a little deeper. By the time I do my third cut, it'll start going all the way through. And by the time I come around, it's, it's completely free. So that's the technique I'm going to use on the headstock. Sharp razor blade, go over it four or five times, and let it just fall off. Okay, once again, if you try paring a piece, I'm going to make a, try to make a circular cut right here. Watch what happens. See how it went out in front of the, the cutting edge? Doesn't work so good. I took that same piece of MDF that I used yesterday to glue the veneer onto the headstock face and I'm using it as a backer board. I got it clamped in. lightly scoring it the first time. There is a lot of glue, actually. Starting to go through. So that's the basic idea. Cut it on several passes, not all at once. Going a little deeper each time. Yeah, that piece was easy. 
see about this. So far so good, haven't torn off any pieces. So far so good. Now that it's trimmed, I can safely go at it with sandpaper. I like this little sanding thing. It, uh, you can change the belt. This is 80, I can go to 120 after 80 grit. It's got all these different curved surfaces. You know, I got a real tight corner there, flat here, bigger corner there, kind of a sharp corner. I don't know, maybe this this edge would work good to, be, to start with. Some 80 grit. Maybe 80 grit's too coarse. So, anyways, guys. Um, this will be a short one today, but if you if you like guitar restoration, uh, go to my channel, subscribe, you know, comment, like, but also go to my playlists. In the playlist area, if you view all of them, you'll see there's like 20 headstock break videos. There's neck resets. I've got it all categorized. You know, and it's not just um, videos from my channel either. You'll see some from Stu Mac. You'll see String Tech Workstations. You'll see T. Woodford, you'll see electronics are all grouped together in one, pickups in another. There's no pickups are electronics, I just... There's just one place where you can kind of search uh, based on topic. Rather than typing in a keyword, if you're not getting the results that you, you're looking for, when you type in a keyword and you do a search on YouTube, go to my channel and I'll look at the playlists because they're all really um, videos that and content that are important for restoring old guitars. There's a lot of excitement around here today. I'm not too worried about scratching the uh, the brown wood part of this right now because I just put that finish on there two days ago. It's a uh, it's a wipe on French polish finish, and I'll probably go over it again. So if I get a few scratches on there, I'll uh, it's not the end of the world. One of these days on the playlist, I'll probably add a. Uh, a playlist called French Polish Finishes. You've probably seen Robbie O'Brien on YouTube and Ian Hates Guitars uh, with Doug Proper and his shellac or French Polish stuff. When I get better at it, I'll probably start making more videos like that because uh, it's non-toxic. It's my preferred finish. It's super thin. It dries faster than lacquer. And the uh, main thing is it's non-toxic for me. I, I can only do lacquer um, in the spring and fall. That's the only time I offer lacquer finishes for my clients. But shellac finishes, I can do them year-round. Indoors, you know, in a nice air-conditioned, heated, or humid, humidity-controlled space. When I'm spraying lacquer, it's out in the big old garage. And it's harder to control the humidity and, and the temperature out there, so I, uh, I only offer it in the spring and fall, because that's in, uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, that's the time of year to be spraying. Actually, all, all across the Midwest, lower Midwest also, you know, in Kentucky, Ohio, southern Indiana, Illinois. Man, that's looking good. Got to drill some holes in there. I got to paint it black. I got a lot of work to the do. The other thing I'm going to tell you about uh, 
is drilling veneers. If you go using a uh, brad point bit, you're going to tear that veneer all up. you got to use a regular wood bit, or if you have a Forstner's bit, I guess a Forstner's bit might work good. But this is what I do. I put a sacrificial piece of wood, MDF, wood, whatever. Um, same one I used to glue the veneer on there. And here we go again. But I'm going to clamp it on there. Two clamps. A protective calls on here. Huh? And then I'm going to drill through the back side because these are kind of like my pilot holes. I'm going to go slow. I'm going to push gently until I see some wood chips. And then I'm probably all the way through. Okay, and now that they're all drilled through, I can widen them slightly with a reamer. Ooh, that baby wanted to tear. This reamer is not a very safe tool. Maybe, maybe it is okay. I just gotta be really careful. I gotta be really careful because this reamer wants to grab an edge. I just don't want to grab an edge. What the heck's going on here? This is a very special drill bit right here. It's made specifically for the bushings that I'm installing. It just widens the hole to the perfect diameter and it lines it up perfectly with the uh, smaller quarter inch hole on the inside here. So this is uh, this is the first time for me using that tool. Um, it's it's an expensive bit. I'll tell you that much. Can't remember what I paid for it, but I wouldn't uh, be surprised if it was 40, 50 bucks. But I sure like it so far. exactly how far to go I gotta get one of those bushings here it is a few minutes later all trimmed and s scraped and sanded and stained <laughs>